Hello, I'm Karen from the Needlefelter.com. Today we're going to make a fennec fox. The first time I saw a fennec fox was on the cover of this Zooborns book. I mean, just look at them. What's not to love? I've wanted to make a fennec ever since. So the first thing I did was look at reference photos and I decided to make a sleeping adult fox. I drew a pattern and I'm thinking the fox will have about six parts. It'll have a head, a body, the front thigh, two ears, and a tail. All right, so let's get started on the core wool. I grab my felting mat and I'm turning it just to find a part that is less felted, kind of like rotating your tires. So I started by pulling off about a 12 inch piece of core wool and then just rolling that up into a cylinder, rolling it really tight to start to create the body of the fox. And as I'm rolling it, I'm going to make one end thicker than the other. I wanna keep the neck end thinner than the rest of the body. And I'm also, even at this early stage, going to start encouraging it into a curve because I want the fox's body to be kind of curled up with the tail wrapped around it. You can think of it as kind of felting a kidney shape. Next, I tear off another 12 inch piece of core wool. I'm gonna split that in half lengthwise and just wrap the sort of back end or the body of the fox to start building that up even thicker. And as I'm felting, I'm not going all the way through. I'm just sort of felting in toward the middle to try to compress this wool. The wool sort of moves at the angle that you're pushing the needle into it. So I wanna press this wool in to help compress it. Then I'm gonna take my second piece of corbel and do the same thing. Just keep wrapping around that body to build up some bulk. And I am trying to keep it fairly smooth. I find even if I'm just doing corbel, having a smooth surface all the way through just helps you in the end, if, especially if the animal you're creating has a shorter coat. I think it also helps you see the form a little bit better if you can keep it smooth.
I also want to make the bottom of the fox flat. So rather than let that bottom stay rounded, I'm gonna go ahead and start flattening that right now. When I compare the piece with the pattern, the spine or the top of the back of the fox needs to be even higher. So I'm just tearing off small pieces of core wool and laying that over the top and felting those in place to help build up that back. Then I wanna check the size of my core wool with the pattern. So I'm checking that I have the right curve, the right size, and then the right height of that bag. To make the thigh, I'm gonna grab a piece of core wool that's about the same length but is thinner, and then I'm going to roll up about a two and a half by three inch rectangle. Kind of felt that a little bit to hold it in place. And then we'll start shaping it into the curve for the thigh. And as I'm felting it, it may look like I'm felting it to the body, but I'm actually not. I'm just sort of felting it to around the shape to get it to, to fit the body. But I'm gonna pull it back off. So you don't wanna be felting all the way through into the body. And then spend some time working on the whole thing, comparing it with the pattern to, and, and making sure that it fits on the body until you get the thigh shape. And it'll be a little more curved at the top than it is at the bottom. So it's a little thinner at the top and a little wider at the bottom. I'm checking it from different angles and that looks like a good fit. And then we'll move on to making the head. So for the head, I pulled off about a 10 inch strip of core wool and rolled that up really tight. And rather than making a round cylinder, I made more of a oval shape. And I started to encourage one end of that into a tiny, teeny, tiny little snout.
Since the eyes are closed on the fox, I'm not really worried about building up eye sockets, but I did put a little bit of black wool to indicate approximately where the eyes will go. At this point, I wasn't sure if the eyes would show or not, but I wanted to include them just to help me get a feel for the size and shape of the head. I'm not gonna attach anything yet. We're gonna still keep these separate but you do want to test them and sort of get a feel for how they'll fit together. It's looking pretty good. Next is one of the funnest parts of this project, which is making those big fluffy ears. So the first thing I did was go back and look at reference photos. Since the ears are lighter on the inside and darker on the outside, I decided to try something I hadn't done before, which was to use a felt sheet to line the inside of the ears. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut out two pieces of white felt sheet, one for each ear. And these, like I said, will become the inner ear. The felted sheet I used was 100% wool. It was about one millimeter thick. The ears do have kind of a notch on the outer edge. There's also sort of a loop of, or a fold of skin above that notch. So I made a little cut in the ears and then made a, almost like a fold of skin for that. I'll show you what I did. I don't think it added that much, so I probably wouldn't do it if I was making another one. For the fox, I'm using four colors of wool. I'm taking my darkest color of batting and that's the color I'm using for the back of the fox's ear. So I'm gonna pull off a thin layer about the same size as that felt sheet cutout. I'll just call that the cutout from now on. And I will be kind of folding in the edges, so I really want this to be just a little bit wider than the um, outline of the felt cutout. So I'm pulling off excess. So what you wanna do is lay your felt cutout down and then just basically trace around it by felting a line all the way around it. You're not felting the cutout to the batting in the back, you're just going around it. I didn't worry too much about the very bottom because I'm not going to felt that. I want to keep that loose to attach to the head. And since we're going to fold this in there, I still had a little bit too much wool on a couple of the sides, so I pulled that off. And then I'm going to trace around it one more time. And I'm not going too deep into the felted sheet. I'm really just trying to trace the shape. The very bottom of the ear felt a little thin, so I'm adding a little bit more wool to the bottom. And then I'm just gonna fold over the edges and felt those in place. At the very tip, it can get a little thick. If you tried to just pull it off, you might distort the ear. So I just kind of pulled the fibers up and then trimmed them a little bit to thin out that tip of the ear. And then continued folding the sides over and felting them down.
Leave the bottom fluffy and feathery. And then go over the whole ear once or twice just to kind of start getting it felted into a sheet. And again, don't go real deep into your mat. You're really trying to just sort of stay on the surface and felt the ear, not the mat. And then carefully peel the ear off. You want to try not to stretch it or distort the shape. And then felt the other side. It goes pretty quick. It's surprising how quickly you can make these ears. So you can see then when you put the cutout on now, it's the ear is starting to shrink down a little bit and become more the size of the cutout which is what we're aiming for. Just want it just a little bit larger than the cutout, but not much. Peel the ear off again, and this time I'm going to give it a good felting with the Clover multi meal tool. This just speeds up the process. You don't have to use this. Then peel it off, flip it over, and go over the whole ear with the Clover multi meal tool. And then one more way that you can smooth the back of the ear out even more is ru by rubbing it against the palm of your hand. So I have the back of the ear facing the palm of my hand and I'm just sort of rubbing it in my hand and the warmth and the friction helps just felt that surface a little bit more and smooth it. So now we're going to attach the cutout. You wanna do that just along the outer edge of the cutout. So I'm starting at the top of the ear and working my way down one side. So you could think of it as using shallow pokes just to attach the felted sheet to the back of the ear. I don't wanna to go too deep into the wool buddy or the felting surface. I'm really just trying to attach these two pieces together. And then I flip it over and felt back through the other side. Try and you'll be able to sort of see the line where you felted through. So just kind of follow that line, almost like you're pushing those fibers back in. And then flip it again and repeat.
Before you felt the other side, you want to fold the ear over. That inner white cutout sheet will shift forward just a little bit. So you may have to adjust the tan wool, you know, maybe pull it a little bit wider. If you have some tan wool hanging over the edge, if there's a little too much, that's fine. Don't worry about it. We'll go ahead and trim that later. And I didn't go all the way down again just because I'm making that skin fold or loop. If you're not making the loop, go ahead and felt the whole side. Next I used a hair straightener. I don't know what temperature my hair straightener is at. It goes from zero to 30. I set it at 10, so it's about a third of the way up. That seems to work really well for wool. You don't need it really hot. You don't wanna scorch the wool. You just wanna help shape it. The way that you pull the ear out around the straightener that can help you create a little bit of a curve and then I'm going to trim around the edge and I trim just a little bit past the white felted sheet This will leave you with sort of a blunt edge and I wanted it to be a little bit rounder. So what I did was I went back and I trimmed just the bottom of that edge. I hope you can see, but what that did was it took off that sort of squareness to the edge and gave it a rounder, more natural finish. And then I went over that with the hair straightener one more time to smooth that out. I think in the end, this gives you a nice, you know, more skin-like feel to the ears. So this is how I made the loop or the fold in the skin. I took some cone top, felted it down the middle, folded that over, felted the edge. And then sort of folded it into shape and attached it to the ear. And once I have the skin fold attached, I went ahead and felted the rest of that edge down and then trimmed it. This fox was so small 
the, in the end that it didn't add that much. If I made a larger fox, I would definitely want to add this detail. But like I said, for this one, I'm, I'm not sure that it made that much of a difference. Now we're ready to add the fluff. So I took some comb top, felted it down the middle, flipped it over and felted a line down the middle again. And I just did this to kind of get that holding together before I attached it to the ear. You want to leave a quarter inch or so just bare because you're going to use that to attach to the head. And then I want to felt it not right on the edge of the ear because we will be folding this over. So not right on the edge, but a little bit in from the edge of the ear. And I'm kind of felting it at an angle because again, I don't want to go all the way through the ear. I'm trying to really attach this to the felted sheet more than going all the way through to the outer edge of the ear. And then I flip it over, felt it from that side just to make sure it's nice and secure. And then fold it back into position and then felt that part right along the edge of the ear. And then I flip it on the other side and just see if, if any kind of stray white fibers came through, I'm trying to kind of felt those back in. You could also trim them off if, if they really bother you, but I find you can usually just sort of coax them back in. You don't want to be too aggressive because you don't want to push the tan wool through to your white side. Because I used the hair straightener on the white felted sheet, it ended up being very smooth and I wanted to rough it up a little bit. I decided to try a bunka brush. It's also called a nap riser, but it's basically a tool used in embroidery and needlepoint. It's used to fluff up certain types of stitches to create more texture. You don't want to really dig into the felted sheet. You just want to kind of scrape the top of it lightly. Maybe practice on, on another sheet before you do your ear. But it works really well. It gives you a light, fluffy finish, kind of like you'd see with a reverse needle, but much faster and <laughs> easier to do. Then I'm giving my the white fluff kind of a rough trim. It's not going to be the final trim, and I want to leave it longer than I need it to be, just because I'm not sure until I get the ears positioned on the head and kind of then get the head positioned. I'm not sure how long I want this white fluff to be. We have all our pieces now except for the tail. We'll make the tail last. So the first thing I want to do again is go back and look at the reference photo and see kind of how, how do I want the head positioned? How do I want the ears positioned? Just kind of get a feel for how you want your fox to be curled up. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the thigh. And I'm not going to attach the very top of the thigh. I want to leave that loose and open so that I can, when I put the top coat on it, I can sort of wrap it over that edge. And then you want to get an idea of how you want to position the head and whether or not you need to add more core wool underneath it or remove core wool if you have too much. I used a hat pin to sort of pin my head in place. figure out the position of the ears. This takes a little time. Don't feel like you have to do it once and 
and you're stuck with it. I pinned mine in place and I think I moved mine around four or five times before I was happy with the position. This is where I think adding the eyes also helps you position the ears. Another thing I did was just take a little bit of wool and make a rough tail shape, wrap it around the base of your fox to see how that head position and ear position will look if you had a tail in front of it. Just helps give you an idea of whether or not you've got them placed in a way that you like. Once you're happy with the position, go ahead and attach the head. And you can add a little core wool to create a neck. And remember that you want the piece to sit flat, so you may need to add some wool on the bottom underneath the head just to make sure that it, your piece doesn't roll backwards or forwards and it's gonna sit nice and stand up on its own. I actually got a little bit aggressive with core wool and I added too much under the head. So it may look super high here. I went back later and removed some. I had to cut some out because I, I had the head sitting too high. But don't feel you have to make yours as high as I made mine because it was a mistake. Once you have your head attached, go ahead and attach the ears to the head. You want to be careful to kind of move the white fluffy, long fluffy wool out of the way as you're doing that so you don't felt the fluff down. You can trim a little bit of the white fluff if once you have it in position if it's starting to get in the way but I wouldn't do the final trim because you may decide you want to change the position of the ears a little bit later once you have the ears attached you're ready to start adding top coat. I like to draw in or sort of color block roughly where I'm going to put the colors. I was using four colors of wool in this case. So I'm just roughly blocking in a face because the top of the face may show and where I want the darkest color and the lightest color really is what, what I was most concerned with. So I did that with an air erase marker. Off camera, I went ahead and added a face to my fox. I meant to record it and I just forgot, but what I did was sort of follow those areas that I had color blocked, but I mostly focused on the forehead and the eyes. I added a little nose. I didn't bother with the mouth because I knew the mouth wouldn't show, and my fox was looking a little bit too square, so I actually added some more core wool to the forehead and rounded that out a bit. I started by adding white to the lightest areas, so I'm doing the top of the thigh. So I added the white to the top of the thigh because that's where the light would hit it. And then also um, Fenix have kind of a lighter 
chest, so I added some white there underneath the head. And then I just started filling in the colors I had blocked out. So I'm adding more of the darkest wool to the top and back of the head and then to the back of the body. I also in the end ended up making the whole back of the body just the dark color. Just, it just even though it may not be accurate, I just thought it looked better to have it be all one color. Taking a little artistic license with the <laughs> colors of the fur. And then I filled in with the two lighter tones of the sand color. So to help the colors blend where they sort of join, you can pull off very thin sections as you lay a thin amount of batting from say a little bit darker color over a lighter color. This technique of just taking a thin wisp of one color and layering it on top of the other helps you create really beautiful gradients. Not attaching the top of the thigh actually made it much easier to put the light color over the edge of it and then also to kind of get that medium toned sand color down behind the top of the thigh. I think it just helped with the realism. You also want to put a color on the bottom of the box just to make a base. So I, I decided to go with the medium tone and just put that across the whole bottom. We're ready to start the tail. I used a piece of 22 gauge cloth wrapped wire for the tail and I just folded it in half and started twisting it, but I left a good sized loop at the top. We'll use that to attach um, a little bit of wool to create the tuft at the tip of the tail. And I wasn't sure how long my tail needed to be, so I just twisted the whole length of the wire. And once I had the wire twisted, I wrapped it around the fox's body, kind of figured out about where the tail needed to end. And just as a reminder to myself, I marked that with a Sharpie marker so that I knew not to extend the wool past that point. So I'm gonna use some white comb top, same white comb top that I use on the body, some cream color alpaca, or I guess it's sort of a fawn color is technically I think what it's called, and then a combed top that matches that darker sand color. It doesn't. It's not a perfect match, doesn't need to be, it's close enough. I decided I wanted to mix some of the fawn colored alpaca into the sand color wool and the white wool. So I laid out some of the sand color and I laid out some of the white and then I pulled just little bits of alpaca and 
layer those on top. So I hand blended the white with the alpaca and then I did the same with the tan. So I'm going to end up with basically two colors for most of the tail. I decided that I want the tip of the tail to have a little bit more color. So I grabbed a little bit of a reddish brown and mixed that with some of the darker tan wool. You don't have to do this. I just did it just to add a little bit of color. And then I wanted the underside to be lighter, so I added about half of my half the tuft of white and half a tuft of this darker color. Then I inserted those in the loop and then closed the loop, and that becomes the tuft at the tip of the tail. To make the base for the tail, I pulled off a long strip of the batting. It was a little thick, so I split it. And I wrapped the wire down to that mark I had made. So not, not the whole length, but just down to that mark I had made with the Sharpie marker. I'm going to put a thick coating of wool on this because I want to be able to felt into the coating. It won't show in the end and it just makes it easier to make a nice fluffy tail if you have a good base to be able to felt it into. I ended up wrapping the tail down, back up, around the tuft, uh, the base of the tuft a little bit to encourage it into more of a tail tip. And then felt that in place and then I wrapped it one more time with another layer of batting Now we're ready to start attaching the tufts. I did this in two ways. At the top of the tail, I took little tufts of wool and just felted them in right down the middle and then on either side to attach them. And kind of um, encourage them into shape. And that works fine, you can do the whole tail that way. But since I was going to be using mainly two colors, I decided to just go ahead and felt a whole line down the tail. So you can take a longer section of wool, felt it down the middle, flip it over, felt one side, flip it back the other way, felt the other side, and it just get you, I don't know, it felt like I got done faster that way. I think if you wanted a tail with a little more variation in the color, the tough method would probably work better. But if you just really have, you know, it's mostly all the same color or two colors, doing longer lines of Tufts works fine too. Just go ahead and fill in your tail. And then you can test it out. Make sure you're happy with it. So trim the wire, 
figure out about where you want it to go into the body. I marked it with an air erase marker. And then I used a small awl to make a hole and then enlarged the hole with the larger awl. I'm ready to glue it in place, so I got some cardboard so that I don't get the glue on my pink mat. That's happened before. And I'm using E6000 glue on the wire. Not too much, just, just enough. I don't want a big chunk of it oozing out of the end of the tail, so just enough to cover it lightly. And then go ahead, insert the wire into the body. Make sure it's positioned. If, if you have a lighter side of wool and a darker side, make sure you've got that lighter side positioned where you want it. Then I let mine dry for about tw at least 12 hours. I usually just leave it overnight. And then come back and go ahead and position your tail. I made my whole thigh too light. I had to go back in and add some darker, some of the darker wool to the left side and the bottom of it once I got the tail on. I decided to add a little bit more wool to the base of the tail where it attached to the body. So I just took and add, added a few tufts of wool there and trimmed them. Once I was happy with that, I went ahead and gave the tail a nice comb. And then felt that in place from underneath, from the bottom. That just keeps it wrapped tight around the body. Then I gave the white fluff in the fox's ears a trim. And he was done. I love my little fennec fox. I think this project could also be adapted for other animals. If you'd like to see me make more sleeping animals, let me know in the comments. And as always, if you have questions or comments, leave them below. And thanks for watching.